So okay. All right. Okay, so everyone knows what a uh, heartbeat sounds like, right? So that's actually the sounds of the valves closing. We covered valves last week, but yeah, whenever these valves close, that's actually the sounds you hear from a heartbeat. I mean, you don't even need a stethoscope. Actually, where's my stethoscope? Oh, back there. But yeah, there's a stethoscope. I mean, you don't need a stethoscope to hear someone's heartbeat. You can just put, well, don't do this to a random person, but if you have a loved one or a significant other, you can put your heart to the chest and hear their heartbeat, right? So that's the sounds of their heart valves closing. Again, this is why you need to know these terms systole and diastole. If you don't know systole and diastole, you're not going to do good on exam two, I guarantee it. But again, systole is when your heart is squeezing and contracting, so my mnemonic is systole squeeze. Diastole, the opposite. Instead of squeezing and contracting, now the heart is relaxing. So the heart is going to relax, and it's also going to go, grow bigger in diameter. Now, this is where you have the heartbeat. So sometimes it's like called lub dub is often a com common spelling, sometimes spelled with two Bs. Sometimes it's like spelled lup dup with a P. Either way, these are their heart sounds. So the ones for this class, there are, okay, there's a third and fourth heart sound, but for this class, start off with the first and second. The third and fourth are more if you're talking about patho pathology. I don't think we have time for that this semester. Maybe if you're going on to pathophys in nursing or more advanced classes or medical school, you might, you'll might you have to learn about S3 and S4. But the first sound, this is your atrioventricular valve. So the valves are between your atria and the ventricles. These are your mitral, aka bicuspid valve, and the tricuspid valve closing. So when your ventricles squeeze, you don't want the blood going back into your atria. So this is the sound of those AV valves closing when you have the ventricular squeezing. Now this is the start of ventricular systole, again systole squeeze. Now second heart sound, that's dub. So that's dub is the other one. So it's not going to be the atrioventricular valves. It's going to be those semilunar valves at the base of those great vessels, right? Yep, so mitral is the same as bicuspid. And then semilunar valve, so again, you have your pulmonary trunk and you have your aortic, your aorta. So then these are the valves at the base of those. So when you have ventricular diastole, so the thing about ventricular diastole is when it relaxes, the volume increases. But when the volume in the ventricles increases, the pressure also drops off. Or it's like, say you're wearing very tight clothes and then you take that tight clothes off. What happens to the pressure? It feels like you're relaxing and there's less pressure, right? Well, because now the pressure is dropping in the ventricles, this causes the pressure. Now that since there's less pressure in the ventricles, the pressure in the aorta or the pulmonary trunk, depending on the valve, is now greater than the ventricle pressure. So now the, ventric the pressure from the vessels is going to push back toward the ventricles, shutting off those valves. And that's what we see here. So this is the first heart sound again. The first heart sound, S1, is the lub sound. So that is the one from the left ventricular systole. So it's squeezing, and what it's doing is squeezing blood into the aorta, but the valve, you don't want that back flushing and regurgitation into the left atrium. So this is why it's very important to have those AV valves. That's the first heart sound. And notice that we're only seeing one side here, but notice that in this is both the left and the right atrioventricular valves closing. The dub, again, now the ventricles are relaxing. So since they're relaxing, it's easing up the, on the pressure. So with the drop in pressure, this is also a major mechanism of how you fill the ventricles. By the pressure be dropping inside the ventricles, it's going to suck the blood here. But the thing is that it allows it to flow Flow, blood to flow from the atrium into the ventricles but since you hit in this case in the left side you have the aortic valve you have a drop in pressure but the valve is preventing that regurgitation and back flushing into the left ventricle so you have filling from the atrium to ventricle but you don't have that due to the vet and from the aorta to the ventricle due to the valve and again you have it of uh, semilunar valves at both the aortic base of the aorta and also the pulmonary trunk. Okay, so again, what prevents that? The aortic valve. Okay, so then the stethoscope placement for auscultation. So auscultation is like how we listen to the body. And what we have here is like, okay, we have a stethoscope and we have the bell. 
So the cool thing is that if you have a stethoscope at home, what you can do is place it on different parts of the a person's chest and listen to the different valves and based on whether it's left or right or inferior or superior. So the cool thing is that the more superior ones, like you can listen to the aortic and pulmonary valve by going toward closer toward the the more more superior. And again, it's going to be depending on left or right. So what we have here, if you're more toward the superior part and to the right side, you'll hear the aortic valve. But say you move it a little lower and closer to the ventricles, then you'll start hearing the AV valves more. So depending if it's on the left side or the right side, remember the left AV valve is the mitral slash bicuspid valve. So if you make it more inferior and toward the left and toward the ventricles, you'll hear more of the mitral valve sounds. But if you want to listen to the tricuspid valves, maybe move it over to the words the right.